What is a hobby you've always wanted to explore, but don't know the correct gear or steps to go through to start? Woodworking. It seems like nice slow-paced, rewarding work, something my girlfriend knows nothing about. Woodworking is a fantastic hobby, and you have the benefit that you can build sturdy, good-looking pieces that would cost you an arm and a leg from a store. The easiest way to get started is to check out your local community college. They usually have a woodworking shop with all of the tools you'll need and you just pay a small fee for each semester you use it. I've seen the fees be between $50 and $100. If you don't know how to woodwork, it would be best to actually take a wood shop class from that same community college. The reason I suggest doing it this way is that some of the tools that you absolutely must have are really expensive. Take it from me, I've been woodworking about 10 years and I've spent probably a few thousand on them. I don't know. If you're not very good at woodworking, your new furniture could still cost you an arm and a leg. Same here. I have this inherent need to build a sturdy rocking chair to relax in. After I build a canoe, I don't want to alarm you, but you may be a grandpa, and you can sometimes trade your work for weed. I like to think he's moved to Alaska, grown a beard, and started his own little woodworking shop. Slash r slash woodworking start with the fac and the beginner articles. Good luck. Learning how to code. I gotcha bro. Start with Java and work your way up. Start with C. You can learn the basics of C in a month. And it gives you a far better start than Java or other languages. And if you get into a habit of disassembling slash debugging your code. And going over it with a highlighter. Print out the disassemblies. Highlight different parts. ETC. You get to learn assembly language for free. After that. Python. Then Java. And all the other languages you feel like learning. But honestly, with C and Python under your belt the rest are fairly useless except for web development. Don't get swept up in worrying about which language to learn. Or what book is the best. Any programmer will tell you to just learn the logic of programming. Pick a language and start building something. Along the way, you will get stuck and learn something amazing. Then you'll keep building and get stuck again and learn another mind-blowing amazing thing that you never thought you'd be able to do. This will happen over and over if you just keep building and building. It will not happen if you worry about what language is best or what book is best. Just learn the basic logic. Pick one and dive in. I live in the east of England. I want to learn blacksmithing. Start small. All you need is this mini forge, iron dust, a crucible, tongs, hammer, and an anvil. Also safety gear, face mask, leather gloves, Leather apron. The anvil is really the only costly thing. I already have 99 smithing. I worked as a blacksmith for a year. When I was younger I still had my anvil. So long as you have a space to do it. This is actually pretty easy and cheap. Here's what you need. An anvil. Something to rest the anvil on. A stump or a cut off oil drum full of sandworks. A quench tank. A cut off oil drum full of waterworks. A propane forge. These are small. Self contained clean and most of all fast heating they run about a grand a metal table to rest the forge on a drill press a horizontal bandsaw your steel comes in bars and needs to be sectioned up a bunch of hammers of various sizes a bench grinder with a stone on one end and a wire brush on the other a belt sander some welding gloves a post bender a mig welder optional but useful a supply of rivets steel bar stock in one quarter inch round 3 8 inch round, 1 half inch round, and 1 8 x 1 inch flat. Section the bar stock into 24 inch lengths, and learn how to draw points. Make some tongs, you can never have enough tongs. Now you can graduate to hooks, pot sets, pot holders, and fireplace sets. Cheap. Learned how to sail on a sailboat. I learned how to sail in New York City, by paying a lot of money for courses. Got certified. And after college I led 5 friends on a 3 week bare boat charter in the Virgin Islands. It was amazing. But the most important thing I learned was that I could have skipped the entire course by just going to a local yacht club. Asking when they had race nights and offering to lend a hand. Be upfront about your experience level. Really great people and eager to teach and buy a book. Some universities offer sailing courses. Scuba diving. I looked at it, and it seems really expensive as a hobby. If you need any help, I worked for a company which sold diving gear. I also trained the German elite SEC M. 
Military divers. Usually my main topic is military diving and commercial diving, but well scuba diving is the basic for that. And for the exclusive part, you are right, but with a couple hundred bucks you can get some good and cheap equipment which will work just fine. Problem is the main tending which will cost every year two years a bit of money. Amateur astronomy slash stargazing. I find it fascinating, but I really don't know where to begin. I'm just a beginner, but will give you the advice I was given. There is no need to buy a telescope, yet, your best tools are a beginner's stargazing book and a reasonable pair of binoculars. With a decent pair of binoculars you will be able to see details on the moon, Jupiter and its moons. Some detail in galaxies and nebulae. The best thing to do, is go out on a clear night and look. Try and get your bearings, and learn some constellations. A good place to start, is the finding the pole star from Ursa Major. Happy star watching. Come take a look at slash r slash astronomy. There are loads of beginner threads with some great info. Adding slash r slash astrophotography. If you are interested, in sharing what you see through the telescope and slash r slash ask astronomy which is a good place, to ask questions regarding astronomy though it's still just taking off. Here's a plug for slash r slash start with a bill. It never took off, but it was supposed to be people telling how you start their favorite hobbies with $100 or less. It never took off. I can't be the only one to see the irony in this thread's context. Cars. At least the basics. I've been given the runaround by a number of mechanics. Buy a cheap car and purchase its workshop manual. You'll be able to pull it completely apart and put it back together with the right tools. Just bought one myself for the same reason. I have a 2000 Volvo, that keep crapping out on me, I was gonna get rid of, maybe I should do that with it, what tools and price range. Stand up comedy point I have pages, and pages of jokes I just can't for the life of me structure them into a comprehensive set, with segues into the next one. A lot of comedians just skip the whole seg thing, look at Mitch Hedberg, or Stephen Wright, there's no real connection between their jokes. They just said something funny, then said something else that was funny. The interesting thing is, that when they skip the seg they don't come off as lazy. They come off, like they are too cool for segs. Seg, not segway. This is a segway. Maybe I wanted to do my set on a segway for the funnies. Quit crushing my dreams. Mitch Hedberg was famous for one-liners and almost never connected his jokes. He was also absolutely frigging hilarious. Tablet top stuff like Warhammer and D&D, I know a little bit, but the appeal to me is the social aspect, and it's hard to make any friends who are into that, because they won't want some N00B who doesn't know sh, it's pretty intimidating. Totally wrong about people not liking noobs and sh, I just recently started playing Magic the Gathering, and found a local game shop, LGS, and everyone there has been nothing but helpful and friendly. They also do Warhammer and D&D and the people always bring extra stuff in case a new person wants to play. I've watched a few Warhammer games and the people playing were more than happy to answer any questions. Glass blowing. It's so pretty. Seems calming. It is quite calming. Glass has a couple of interesting trays that make it fun to work with first. Glass contracts as it's heated, particularly when you get it glowing hot, which is what enables you to close things off which is pretty fun. Glass also has extremely low thermal conductivity, which means you can touch glass that is very close to the site you're working on, allowing some pretty fine control. This high heat capacity means you can also make some remarkably specific modifications a fairly common modification I needed to do, was to make a hole in the side of a tube, which could be done, by heating an area about half the size of a dime, and then blowing air into the tube which would cause the heated area to inflate and pop off. It thins out to a paper-like material when this happens, so it's pretty safe. On top of all this, it's fairly easy to tell where glass is weak, slightly heated, and you can see stressed areas, and the stressed areas can be basically healed by heating them slightly over and over again. Mistakes can thus be corrected fairly easily it's totally possible to overwork material, but it's nowhere near as unforgiving as most. Now, I did scientific glass blowing making lab equipment, seriously. Even today it's sometimes easier to make your own glassware than to order, if it's sufficiently complicated. And it's certainly better to repair it, if it's really complicated. This is quite different from what artists typically do. I had an oxyacetylene torch, goggles, a rubber tube with a little mouthpiece, and a cowl of tolls for manipulation. 
and started with tubes of glass of varying diameters. My uncle did glass blowing as an artist, and he worked with those UJ metal tubes you see at rent fairs and museums and whatnot. Completely different experiences for us. Almost no overlap in technical skills. E. Dyslexia of scientific terms earth turf. E2. Okay a ton of people asked me for some more information, and the truth of the matter is, that this post by slash you slash genitalia has a ton more information, and that user is much more experienced than I am. I basically took a class on it, then used it, whenever I needed serious glassware, and they are right to emphasize safety first, that sh gets hot, a hole in the side of a tube, you spelled cub wrong, it seems really stressful, and draining to me. Archery hipster here, I've been interested in it, since long before the Hunger Games made everyone, and their mom want to buy a bow, but like it's expensive and stuff, slash r slash archery, if you're not already subscribed, I feel like they missed a golden opportunity by not calling it r slash cherry. Photoshop, YouTube you suck at Photoshop it's hilarious, and I learned a lot of the basics from it, is that the one where he erased a wedding band from a photo, while constantly talking shit about his ex-wife, just pirate the software, and follow video tutorials on YouTube. The tutorials are really great at getting you familiar with the software, and introducing you to the techniques. From there you can look up specific techniques such how to remove someone from a picture, or how to create fire, and try it yourself with less hand holding. Plus one. I support pirating software for the purpose of learning how to use it, only then can it be useful enough to you to justify the expense. You're making yourself into a customer for life. Fencing. Fencing is easy. First, scratch off any identifying marks from the items you're trying to sell. You don't want the legitimate owner to see that item for sale somewhere and call the police. Then, take a few pictures and put it up on Craigslist. Boom. Now you're a fence. No no no. That's the wrong sort of fencing. Op is going to need a post hole digger, a mallet, a hammer, and some good pliers. Synthesizing LSD. It truly is a dying art. I feel sorry for future generations. Mountain biking. But I live in central London and don't drive. Because I live in central London. This is probably the best ask reddit I've seen on reddit. I love how everyone is helping each other out and now I have tons of hobbies to choose from. Auto repair. I recently bought a 1985 Toyota Corolla. Car be fed. Easy to work on. Also. For most cars you can buy the workshop manual, which will teach you how to pull the entire car apart and put it back together. Highly recommended. The AE86. Awesome car. I like starting with motorcycles. If you're ever further in than elbow deep, you just stand up and walk to the other side of the bike. You can get a lot of the same skills in a less intimidating, for me at least, device. That's exactly where I started. Pro tip. Take pictures of the assemblies, before you start breaking them down. It helps a lot, and be careful with that wiring. The first time I rebuilt a bike I got some circuits crossed, and it ended up spontaneously combusting outside a liquor store. Not my proudest moment. Home brewing. Equipment and room to do this in my house. Slash r slash home brewing. A lot of super friendly people over there that have tons of knowledge. Paintballing. I've been casually with friends a few times, like most people, but I've gotten the urge a few times, to do it properly. The guys I do see play it professionally, or even as just a hobby take it so hard though. I don't think I'd be able to commit that much, I was into it for a few years, really enjoyed it, but the cost got a bit much for me, mainly due to my itchy trigger finger, by the time I bought a gun. Hopper. Mask and clothing I'd probably spent 700 pounds. If you look after it though it has good resale value. The paint is what gets you. Where I played it was 5 pounds for 100 balls which is pretty cheap compared to other places I've played. But when you play every other week for 4, 5 hours I could easily I spend 100 pounds a month on paint alone. I was a shot. Wingsuit flying. I doubt you can walk into a store and buy a suit and even if you acquire one. How do you learn? In order to learn to wingsuit, there's a few steps you have to take. First, you have to learn to skydive. Wingsuiting is a specific discipline in the whole sport of skydiving. You'll first learn to skydive from a plane by taking an accelerated freefall course or static line course after you've become proficient in freefall and have at bare minimum 200 jumps. You can start learning how to wingsuit. 
learning Spanish. I know the basics and I've been practicing with Duolingo, but I don't think I'm absorbing everything I need to. Is there a community college nearby? You could find a study group and have hilarious, but equally rewarding adventures. Last time I joined the study group, we were expelled from our community college for starting a riot at a classmate's memorial and destroyed a subway. I've been doing the same and have recently started watching children's shows on Netflix or Blu-ray with Spanish audio. I watched Lilo and Stitch, Monsters Incorporated, and Winnie the Pooh in the last few weeks. You'd be surprised how much you can understand based off Duolingo. They talk slow enough you should be able to follow to some extent. Although my only cautions are I don't recommend musicals, only because they have to change words and try to fit things to the melody, and that the subtitles rarely seem to match the speech in Spanish for things that were originally in English. Lucid dreaming. Not sure if it counts as a hobby, but the idea fascinates me. I have a hard time focusing, so I think that's my initial hurdle in getting started. In a similar vein, I've been trying to get into mindfulness meditation and it's proving to be more difficult than I anticipated. I always thought those learn how to lucid dream tutorials were a sham. And one time I tried it, and had full on sleep paralysis of some degree and thought there was an old man crouching in the corner of my room. One tenth would not recommend. That does not sound fun at all. Unless you're into creepy, crouching old men. I heard it's best to start by checking the time frequently, but so far I haven't had any moment that even came close. Keep a dream diary, where you write down everything you remember about your dreams. As soon as you wake up, throughout the day, ask yourself, am I dreaming? Or try and build up a trigger, such as looking at your hands. As in dreams your hands will tend to look off and give you a jolt, telling yourself you're dreaming. Before you go to bed every night, repeat to yourself, I will have a lucid dream, over and over. Keep doing this, should get a few within a week or two. Be warned though, you can get some very strange, powerful and scary ass dreams, but it's totally worth it, if you stick with it. The most amazing thing I've ever done, it's like being god in your own universe. Also be ready to spend a lot of time sleeping, it becomes almost addictive after a while. I've always wanted to learn to play violin, I'm in the same boat, but will the cello, it's one of my one day dreams. How can I learn to fly planes or helicopters without sledding a boatload of cash? By spending two boatloads of cash. Source, broke pilot. Obligatory thanks for the gold. Helitologist here. Yes, the cost of fly planes and helicopters is 2.087 boatloads of cash. Till there's a subreddit for refining everything. Being a writer, I'm usually creative and thought I'd be able to come up with some neat ideas for TV show episodes short stories, and so on, but I assume becoming an actually recognized writer of any sort is basically impossible without having the right connections in TV slash film slash etc. First, if you're looking to write scripts, get Seldix. It's not the best, but it's a free screen writing and other writing software that is great for beginners. Next, buy some books. If you really want to learn the best ways to read books on the type of writing you want to do as well as read material. So if you want to write TV episodes, read TV scripts. If you want to write film, read a film script. Some good books to get you started. Save a Cat by Blake Snider The Art of Dramatic Writing by Laja Segri The Foundations of Screenwriting by Sidfield. Also, don't forget to write every day, even if it's just a sentence or a paragraph. Caving. I think this would be awesome to see new mostly unexplored areas of the earth. This terrifies and excites me at the same time. I don't have any training, and I don't even know where to start. Plus, movies like The Descent make it even more scary. Google search for a local grotto. Caving groups tend to be very secretive and hesitant to give out locations of caves in order to reduce human impact on the often fragile cave environment. For non-technical caving you need a helmet, knee pads, gloves, three light sources, including at least one headlamp, preferably waterproof, a cave map, if available, most of them suck, and a partner. Watchmaking, like old pocket watches, something about all of the small parts and pieces being put together to build something that can last for generations is very appealing. I feel like it's a lost art. I just bought a book recently and hope to do some more research. Climbing. I mean I've gone to the rock gym a few times, but I'd really like to go out and climb some real sh**. 
Guitar. I've recently purchased a basic electric guitar and a few other bits and bats. But other than powering through some rocksmith tutorials with it, I wouldn't really know which direction to point myself in. Here's the one secret. If you follow this rule, you will be shredding someday. Play every day. I even made it rhyme for you, so you don't forget. Seriously, I never once had a lesson. I would just pick up the thing for 20 minutes a day. Then I learned what a power chord was. Hey. That kinda sounds like smells like teen spirit. Nice. Then I looked up a tab the Joker by Steve Miller. That's a fun song. Pretty easy too. Let me practice. That one over and over until I've mastered it. Hey. I learned how to hammer. Now my blisters are calluses. Calluses. Spelling. Effort. I'm playing guitar. One thing builds on the other. Over time. And you master a few more songs. Until you can start to do little licks and solos. There are no correct steps. Just practice and patience, I can shred, now, and it sounds really good, but hell if I know, if it's the right way to play, there's three different ways you can hold your hands, to play one chord, what's the right way, there is no right way, just practice and patience, until it starts to sound good, yoga, I'm male, in my 40s, fat, and have a bad back, I'd be too embarrassed to go to a class. I'm a 20 something female, but have tried a ton of yoga studios. Common theme throughout. Welcoming to dudes. A guy goes in, and the teacher slash other students are so supportive. Probably cause they figured it would be hard for them to go. Yoga is so good for you. If you made yourself go to about 3 classes, you'd probably be hooked. Fishing. Recently started fishing, and I have no clue what, or how to fish, or what to use. For those willing to help I'm fresh water fishing at a local reservoir for smaller base, 8 to 15 inches, and the occasional small mouth or pickerel, excuse the spelling, beer is important, beer is important critical. Building PCs, just head to slash r slash bulldapk, it's easy and can be done cheap, if money is an issue, Nueb has a video guide on how to do it, I built my first one this summer, it's pretty easy, if you know where everything goes it's like legos. Lock picking, because why not, stop right there criminal scum. Golf, tried going to the driving range once, I will try to go on 6am on a Tuesday next time. Golf is best played with cold beer and close friends. To me it's just an excuse, to walk around in a field, and look at nature, and have some fun with my friends. Nature snicker. Hunting, what caliber gun do I need? How much is a license? How many licenses do I need? When am I allowed to shoot a deer? Where am I allowed to shoot a deer? What do I do once I shoot the deer? How will I get the deer back to wherever it is, that I came from? I would love to get out into nature, and participate in this ancient tradition. But I'm afraid, if I do one small thing wrong then I'll be sent to federal prison for 20 years. This is the most natural and animalistic thing that's still acceptable in civilization. But there's so many damn rules. Just let me go out into the woods and shoot a refine animal. Then eat it. Very simple. Look up your states. If you live in the US that is, fish and game department online. Look for hunter education and find a place that hold them. They normally do several a year. They do here in California anyway. Take the class. It covers basic firearm safety and what calibers are suitable for hunting in your state. What game you can hunt. And the suitable areas that you can hunt. And the seasons that the specific game is available for hunting. While you're there you may be able to meet some people that would be willing to allow you to tag along during the season. But be patient, and you will find the hunting community can be extremely helpful. Also look up some sportsmen clubs around you, if they have reasonable membership costs. Join up as you will find they have a lot of benefits to them. Learning how to make EDM, electronic dance music, on my computer, I was able to get Ableton, a program where you can make music, but it's so complex and there is so much, that I can do, that I don't even know where to start. Ice hockey, there are like 3 ice rings in the entire country here lol. Photography, I can't afford a good camera at the moment though, trying to do what I can with my Galaxy S4. Falconry, always thought it would be cool haha, have you read the book My Side of the Mountain? After reading that as a kid, I just had to have a falcon, but for whatever reason, my parents said no. Ballet dancing. X. As an overweight incredibly clumsy tomboy I have kept this secret hidden for a long time. 
but I really have always wanted to get into it, they are so graceful. Sommelier, I, I don't actually know what the term is, anyway, I like wine, but know virtually nothing about it, and I've been told, that my sense of smell is freakishly good, it'd be nice to have a hobby. Skateboarding but every person I've ever met, that skateboards is a douche, and I don't want to be a douche, Parker I don't want to break all my bones, boxing not sure where to go for this one, the gyms near my house, don't have any sort of boxing, there's a few martial arts places near my house, but I don't want to do martial arts, just straight up boxing. Hiking, I own a backpack and a pair of sneakers, what do I need to put in my backpack? How long of a hike is a good one to start with, and will I be okay with a basic pair of sneakers?